Good morning, sisters and brothers. Uh, you're seeing this on tape. I will be very candid with you. You can see us here in the church. It is, uh, as we speak right now, it is Sunday morning, and I'm not sure when this will air, but we've just had a wonderful worship experience, and yet I felt that there was something more that we could or should explore. The, the passage from Paul's letter to the Philippians this morning was so exceptional and so profound that I wanted us to stop and look at it again. So with no conversation in advance, I'm just going to give this passage to you and Father Chris and I are going to just chat about it and we'll see where this goes. Paul says, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Chris, what did, what did you hear? What struck you there? Um, because I'm really familiar with this passage, what I've noticed only just later in life is how Paul says, including all those honorable, true, just, excellent, uh, you heard the list of seven adjectives there, all these beautiful things. Um, but then he says, also, when you've seen that in me. Mm -hmm. And on the face of it, you could see it as immodest. On the other hand, you could see it as accurate pronouncement, and, and I do mean accurate and precise from Paul, because as he lets us know through a number of his epistles, he's not perfect, but he is pretty darned impressive, and he is intimately familiar with God. He's had a conversation with God, and God asked Paul point blank, why are you persecuting me? Why are you prosecuting me? Why are you living your entire life in opposite of my will for you? Can we get that reversed? Can you repent and turn? And he does. And here now, later, far later in his life, he's got that perspective. And I, I guess uh, I, I invite people, when you run into people like that, whether their expertise is uh, medical or anything else to do what Paul invites them. Let them be as smart as they are. Like me with a plumber. I know nothing. They know everything. I have prayerfully asked God to send me the right plumber and I'll trust that that happens and then learn from the plumber. There you go. And I think there's just a lot of opportunities and I, I love that he finishes that way after listing all these beautiful things. And also, just on a macro level, what I'm hearing is, let's be the glass half full people, and let's accentuate the positive, and what is it, minimize? Them? Eliminate the negative. Eliminate the negative in that 100 year old, I think it's from the 1930s. Um, Latch on to the affirmative, don't mess with Mr. In-Between. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you, I had it a little, you had it a lot. That's, you know. <laughs> The steel Lennon and McCartney. Here we go, <laughs> folks. I'm really impressed by that. But anyway, and I do want to get that. I'm going to stop then. Um, especially at this time of year, between now and November 3rd, and the few days after November 3rd, there is much good, true, beautiful, excellent, just gift and grace and mercy from God. Let's really focus on that rather than let Amen. anybody invite us into a dark, place of lack or fear or threatened chaos. Uh, God is in charge, as Philippians suggests. Yeah, that's exactly what I was 
go, where I was going to go with this, because what, what really jumped out for me was Paul goes through and, and he lists out whatever's just, whatever's honorable, whatever's pure, pleasing, commendable, excellence. Uh, what jumped out at me was the phrase, think about these things. Mm. We are so quick to think about the bad things. We are so quick to, to ascribe blame. We are so quick to, to magnify perceived slights, whether they were intentional or not. Um, and yet, what Paul's telling us to do is get out of our own heads a little bit. Stop focusing too much on that. Stop reading all that social media stuff. Stop watching whichever brand you choose, Fox, CNN. Stop watching all that stuff. As Father says, there's plenty of stuff to bring us down in the world. Instead, listen to Paul, where he tells us to think about the things that are commendable, are pure, are just, are pleasing, to focus on those because that's how we kind of, we get our mind right. We can convince ourselves as human beings about anything, right? If you really truly want to think that the world is doomed, you can find a way to think that. But the converse is also true. If you really truly want to think that the world is a beautiful and glorious place, you can convince yourself to do that too. How? Listen to Paul. He has it figured out. Now, Paul's not encumbered by too much humility, but uh, that's okay because I had, a, I had a wonderful friend who has since gone to the great reward, but as my friend Mickey used to tell me, it ain't bragging if you can back it up. <laughs> Paul, my friends, could back it up. And that sounds to me like a great place to wrap this up. Father, you wanna pray us out? I will do that. God, thank you for Paul's ministry. Thank you for his capacity and ability to inspire us, even now as freshly and beautifully as he did uh, 1,975 years ago. Absolutely extraordinary. And we ask that should you will it, you send the same Holy Spirit that went to Paul to act on us in all the ways that you would have us guided and lifted toward things honorable, just, pure, and excellent. And we pray that in confident expectation in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Oh,